Hello and welcome to everybody. Everybody here with me now, everybody in the future. Back again on the orchestral game music stream. Happy to be with you, happy to be working on it again. We're in Studio One here, of course. And yeah, get started in just a minute. Just allow a few people to arrive. Sometimes that takes some time. Please feel free to say hello if you're in the chat here. Let me know where you're viewing from and if you have any questions or if you just want to chat about whatever. I'm down to chat about whatever. And if you've got the emojis, you know, Megan's always on the emoji train making it. I don't know what the word I was looking for. I was looking for something good there. It didn't come out, but these are my emojis. <laughs> Great. Okay, so, um, yes, last time... We got some new parts down, we added a melody, we're going to play through it here from the beginning, and then we'll decide what we want to get into. Making it Moj, okay, I like it. Hmm. Okay, from the top, here we go. Let me know how the uh, volume is and everything for you, it should be pretty good. Oops, that's in the chat. Speaking now, also my streaming software is telling me it's having some weird errors or something, so hopefully the connection stays good. Let me know if it drops out or anything. Hi, Hari. Welcome. Nice to have you back again. How are you doing? Music is quiet. It's very dynamic music is the problem, so let's see. Oh, I, can, I can bring it up on here a little bit. Let's try that. That's where we're at. So yeah, hopefully the stream stays decent. I don't know why, but my connection is the same as it always is. Um, so yeah, hopefully it's fine. Just please let me know if anything is needed or if it's not resolving itself or whatever. So yes, um, a few things I wanted to get into here before we get into like a new section or whatever. Uh, I think the first is there's some volume balance issues between things that have to do with compression. And really, in this case, I'm not using compression as a, uh, how would you call it, creative technique. I'm not like trying to shape the tone of the instrument with it. I'm just trying to actually rein in notes that are too loud. And we're getting some of those notes in the clarinet. And I think overall, the mix needs some light compression on it so that it restrains itself a little bit. So let's do that. I'll look into the first uh, a clarinet melody here, and then I'll put a compressor on there and we can play around the net, as I've called it here, apparently. <laughs> so I'm using, right, all stock stuff. So don't touch the fancy stuff. Okay. Let's just see. I'll turn it off for a second. So 
So I'm gonna go for something very gentle, like a two to one ratio with a soft knee, with a slow attack, like 50 or 60 milliseconds, pretty slow release. Nikolaj Uchman finally caught the live. And I asked Connie, I want to thank you so much for your Studio One course. Can't begin to say how helpful it was. Wow, that's so great. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks for being here. Where are you from? Hopefully I didn't butcher your name too badly. I'm sure I did, but... <laughs> so, let me just get back on my compression train here. So we gotta really dig into this thing, it's super quiet. From Poland, wow. Ha, <laughs> used to getting my name butchered, okay. If you wanna write it out for me, how to say it, I'd be curious to know. I was gonna guess Poland, ha, <laughs> nice, okay. <laughs> so that, that sounds pretty good to me. I'm just gonna throw this compressor, copy it over to the second clarinet, just hopefully it just works. I don't really wanna to have to mess with it too much, but sometimes you do, you never know. Yeah, that's fine. It's actually Mikowai, ah. That's actually awesome. <laughs> I'll put some compression on the whole mix as well. Before the limiter, of course. Go two to one here as well. Very long attack, long release. It does sound pretty nice, hey? Probably has a, a vibrato as well that I'm not using right now that I should probably get into at some point. So let's bring this down another couple of dB. Sounds like right here we're hitting a peak of some sort. Yeah, let's stick with that for now. Okay, great. Welcome everybody. Uh, if you're new here, please say hello if you're into that kind of thing and let me know where you're viewing from, if you have any questions, anything like that. You can also check out the links that are in the description of this video. I have a course down there called Musical Warp Drive that's all about theory and composition. The second part of that is coming out hopefully tomorrow, uh, which is all about melody. Melody, scales, chords, chords, <laughs> melody, scales, chord tones, mos, chromatics, arpeggios, articulation, all the good stuff to do with melody. I'm quite excited about it actually. So that hopefully will be tomorrow. Um, and if you're into saying hello, this is a live stream for you. That's a great way to put it. Hello, Nick, welcome. <laughs> um, so yeah, hopefully that's tomorrow. In fact, it was supposed to be today. And then it went back under review on Udemy because I had an emoji in my description. And they said, you can't have an emoji in your description. So it had to get, I removed the emoji and then now it's getting re-reviewed again. So hopefully by tomorrow it's ready for everybody. Shango, greetings everyone here from Georgia, USA. Hey, wonderful. Welcome. Thank you. And yeah, then I have a link down there in the description for, I like music, yo, for a, uh, my Discord as well, which the people here on the Discord and that's just a place you can chat with me about music and um, yeah, get feedback on your work and whatever, talk about fun music stuff. I'm into it. Okay. I think uh, a couple of things I wanted to do. One, I'm not sure if I'm going to get to it right now because it's kind of annoying, but I may, we'll see. I'm going to play from the top once more just to orient myself. Sorry to hit you with just all this music over and over again. It's not what you came here for, right? <laughs> and then we'll see where we want to go. Thomas, welcome. So nice to have everybody here. Thank you all.
Jesus, welcome. Thanks, I'm glad you like it. You watched the other two streams earlier? What? That blows my mind. <laughs> I've spent uh, four hours on it so far. I believe the past two streams. I take a long time to make music. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, they're very long, I know. <laughs> but the skip function's there, so you, you succeeded. Them like a movie, that's nice. Can't rush greatness. <laughs> Spent five hours on stuff I'm not done with. It just generally takes long. Yeah, I know. It just does. It's fun though, eh? It's fun that it takes a long time. It's a big project. Okay, Philip, welcome. Um, one of the things I do want to do that I'm not sure if I'm going to get to today, we'll see, is I'm going to reorganize this arpeggio. Right now I'm descending this in a very kind of like cliche way, going just straight down. Um, and I'm thinking perhaps instead of this, it could be something like double the length excuse me, or four times the length even, maybe like, um, uh, uh. something like that I think could be nice, more variation more interesting more flowing overall like i like the descending thing too but also it gets used a lot and so we don't necessarily have to keep it that way i don't know if i'm gonna get into it right at the moment though i kind of feel like trying to get into a new part right now so let's see if we can do that if anyone's got suggestions by the way please hit me because sometimes i just don't know what to do managed to make the stock piano sound like something from contact that's great thank you <laughs> Thank you, Hari, for your kind words. I appreciate that. And my lovely sweetie. <laughs> kind of reminds me of Microsoft, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 main theme. I actually haven't heard that yet. I always think of how bland it is. They should replace it with your stuff. That's hilarious. That was my question. What do you what do you do when you don't know what to do in the next piece? Ah, okay, let's talk about that. I haven't played the Flight Simulator 2020 yet. I'm actually super stoked on trying it when I get like a 3080, if anyone knows what that is. <laughs> Hopefully sometime. So, um, okay. What to do when you don't know what to do? That's a good question. That's the question of my life, man. Uh, one thing is think melodically. <clears throat> So you can, you can, of course, start a section anyway. Start from bass, start from harmony, start from melody, start from percussion, start from whatever. Good luck getting your hands on the 3080, yeah, I know. Huh. We'll see. So in this case, the first idea that comes to mind is, oh, I, there's two. I'm, I'm thinking about a change of harmony. I don't know exactly what it is yet. And second, um, perhaps taking the melody and moving it to a new area, but imitating the same sort of figures in it uh, and playing it over some sort of different harmony there. But these are just some ideas. Sometimes you just try one little thing and you spend 15 minutes on it and it sucks, or you spend two hours on it or two days on it and you just get rid of it. So that absolutely might happen here. I'm gonna play through this last part once more just so I can get a feel and I just wanna see. One of the techniques that I use most often is I play the last section of the song and then I allow my imagination, we call audiation, musical imagination is called audiation. I try to audiate 
what happens next and just allow my imagination to free flow into that space and maybe it's a melody that comes maybe it's some harmony maybe it's whatever i'm not quite sure so we'll see <laughs> Percussive elements, that's a great idea in that kit. I, I, I like shortchange myself there by, by listening to the, um, listening to, reading the comments. Let me, give me a second here. Got to go to bed in 14 minutes, my freshman in high school. <laughs> Damn. That's all right, I understand. Yeah, so we could try to get some minor in here right now. We've not really been in the minor world for a little bit. Ugh. <laughs> So we could take this now, we've been playing in the key of G flat, G flat major seven to A major, or yeah, something like that, A major add nine to a D major nine or something. Those chords are actually from F sharp minor. So I could go to an F sharp minor chord now of some sort. Um, perhaps some kind of inversion. Maybe a melody using a bell sound with a ping pong delay. Interesting idea. Yes, let's give it a shot. Let me just work this out first. Um, I'm thinking perhaps from here, maybe even a replacement of this chord, I wonder. Hmm. Something. Not the chord I wanted. sound. Not it. Could go straight to the minor. At least it isn't jazz chords. It basically has at least one non-diatonic note. Jazz gets crazy out of scale. Hey man, that's my life. I'm into the jazz chords. How's that one? No, that's the wrong note. <laughs> there you go. Um, so yeah, let's think we're in F sharp minor now. So from here, we can come down to perhaps B 
minor, that's a nice sound coming up to A. Okay, go change key, let's think B minor to the A, to the D again, to the F sharp minor, back to the B. the core there. Hmm. What are your favorite artists' musical inspirations? Um, Pat Metheny has been huge in my life. Ted Green, the guitar player, is possibly my biggest musical idol along with one of my own teachers, W.A. Matthew. Um, I call him Alaudeen, but I'll write his name here if anyone wants to look him up. He's an incredible person. I'm lucky enough to have studied with him. Um, and then so many things, of course. I listen to a lot of jazz, a lot of electronic music, a lot of metal and rock. Um, yeah. If you want to learn about music, please read the books of this man, W.A. Matthew. He has four books, and they are all gold, 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 gold. Now, I don't know if I ever told the story on a stream before. Did I have, uh, baby, did I ever tell that story on a stream about how I met Ma, uh, Alaudin? I don't want to, like, repeat myself if people have already heard the thing. It's kind of a nice story anyway. So, um... When I say baby, by the way, by the way, people should know Megan is my baby. Megan is my partner, my baby partner. <laughs> um, the story just goes that uh, I had read his books for many years. <laughs> okay, sure. So I've read his books for many years, and uh, I have them all here, I believe, behind me, or maybe some of them are in the house, but particularly. This book, so I mean, all his books are incredible, really, all of them. But this book in particular, Harmonic Experience, it's called. If you are serious about understanding music, if you really want to know how music actually works fundamentally, this is what you have to read. This will change your life. I mean, you can listen to me too, of course. I've read the whole thing a couple of times and I been a student of the man himself, so I also have some things to say about it. But obviously, I'm not him. I'm not the source of it. So that book is beyond amazing. It's very dense, though. It's not like light reading. It's not like, yeah, man, I'm kind of into music, and let's just study a little bit. It's like, you got to be serious. <laughs> but anyway, his other books are a bit lighter. Read them for many years. Always thought I should contact him and thank him for his contribution to my life, but never did for some reason. And then one day I just woke up and that morning I thought, I'm gonna do that right now. And I went over to the computer, looked up his website, there's his email. So I emailed him, sent him a big gratitude letter about how much I appreciated his uh, music and his books and the impact it's had on my musical life and my life altogether. And then within like an hour, he emailed me back and see, all it said was like, you should call me and he gave me his number. So I called him um, later that day, and we had like a two hour long, just mind blowing conversation, basically, um, in so many ways that I can hardly even get into now. And during that conversation, he offered to be my teacher. And that was one of the things I was going to ask him about, because he's big on having a teacher. He's big on having a musical mentor, um, someone who knows more than you and can support you in your own journey. And I wasn't going to ask him to be my teacher, but I was going to ask, how do I find a teacher? Because I had never really had a teacher before. I'd had a guitar teacher for a year or two. Otherwise, I'm all self-studied. I didn't go to music school or anything. And um, so, yeah, he, on the call, offered to do that. And I blew my mind. So I started taking lessons with him online. He nice. What's up? Yo. And uh, then... I went to go see him. He lives in California, so I went down to his place and I stayed with, not with him, but near him for a week and spent the week going to see him and talking music, studying, walking, eating, living, blah, 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 which is just one of the most amazing experiences I've had, actually. 
and then continued on and off since then taking lessons with him. So that taught me so much, of course, about music, but also about reaching out to people and you never know what's going to happen, you know. So I encourage everybody to do that. That was a big thing for me to see, like this man who I thought was so high and mighty above above me, so to speak, I could never uh, be present with him, suddenly went from that, just having the inclination to message him. And then the next thing I knew, he was teaching me. And uh, which reminds me, I really got to be back in touch with him again. I haven't seen him now in a few months, maybe six months or something. And um, yeah, it's time. <laughs> yeah, it was a very magical time. He's a very magical person, very magical person. Um, I do want to like hard copy version is best. Oh yeah. Trust me. This is like a book that you want to have forever. <laughs> it's expensive. I know, but it is worth it. It is really worth it. Um, okay. I can tell some more stories about that another time. There's a lot of uh, great stuff to talk about coming from him, but anyway, back to the music. Um, that's a great story. Happy you got to experience. I'll definitely try to get a hold of these books here in the UK. Yeah. Please do. The other books are also amazing, amazing, amazing. Some of them are perfectly fine also for non-musicians to read who are into music. So uh, that's great too. Bridge of Waves is like that. Um, yeah, I interject some stories every time for sure. Yeah. I have his picture. I don't know if you can see it here or not, but if anyone's taken my warp drive course, it's tiny in this little image. You can't possibly see it. But if anyone's taken my warp drive course, you know um, that I uh, mention making a kind of, I don't know what I call it in the in the course, a uh, collage of your musical idols or people you respect or an altar of a sort. And that's what I have next to me over here is my uh, altar of inspiration, both musical and otherwise. And I have their photos framed. And so whenever I'm in the studio, I feel like I'm with them and I can turn over and see them. I remember getting a chance last year to play before a concert, which my tutor happened to be a part of, she, and she scared that crap out of me because I didn't know she was there. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> I had to play for um, Alaudine. That's that's his Sufi name, the guy we're talking about, my teacher. Uh, he goes by Alaudine. And I got down into the room, and we were talking for a while, and he's like, okay, so play me play me some piano music, he said. Now, you guys maybe know I play a little bit of piano, but that's not my main instrument. But okay, here we went. So I went and I improvised something with him. Who He is a piano player. That's his primary instrument. He's like godly on the thing. And so he sits down in a rocking chair on the far end, and I'm sitting there at the piano, and I just improvised something. All I remember about it was that it was in F. And that's what I remember. I was so like, oh, God, I have to play something in front of him. And um, and what I, what he said afterwards, the first thing he said was, you know, Max, it's not as bad as you think it is. And then he came over and he took me off the piano bench and he sat me down in a rocking chair right next to the piano. And I was facing him in the chair and he sat down at the piano and he was now going to improvise something. And uh, he turned to me right before he started. He turned to me and I was facing him and he turns to me and he goes, sleep. And he turns and he starts playing right then. And it just blew my mind apart. And he just played for like, I don't know, five minutes. And then he's also uh, very, very well trained in North Indian singing, raga. And so he's playing piano, the singing comes in and the whole thing was just like incredible. Uh, so that was one of my first experiences with him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kind of feel like we can already get some percussion stuff coming in here. Got my vibrations a little bit free of charge. Yeah, no kidding. Okay, so now we're gonna go something like this. That's the wrong notes, but nah.
<laughs> Two underwater level of Donkey Kong Country. Yeah, totally. But also sometimes it is nice to like, you know, have bits that are reminiscent of other bits because that's just how it is. I'm inspired by those things, so sometimes it's got to be in there. Um, but we're just trying at some stuff right now. We don't know what we're going to end up with. Yeah, those are probably the exact notes of it. This is just such a common pattern. Um, just order the harmonic experience, but Christmas present from me to me. Hey, you should be super excited. Wow, that's a great, great idea. I can't wait to hear how it goes for you. Um, it's in my shopping cart. Promise my fiance I'm done making music related purchases. That's hilarious. Um, definitely also, like if you guys don't know, join the Discord. The link is in the description. It's like a sort of chat room kind of thing where I and other people who are on the channel hang out. And I'd love to hear your experiences about the book and questions and stuff there because it's a huge part of my life. Um, anyway, this, uh, this pattern, whenever you've got like, it works on minor nine chords and it works on major seventh chords, which is like the half step. I was about to say, I'll let you know on Discord. Hey, that's great. Okay. Half step down the major third, down the minor third. You can't see a keyboard here. I got to figure that out. Hey, I should have like my keyboard permanently displayed on the thing. That would be pretty cool. Here we go. This is like a D major seventh arpeggio. One, seven, five, three. It's such a common pattern. It's a similar pattern that I'm using earlier. I'm just starting on the third in that pattern. It's great because you get the half step, really. That's what, what it's all about, right? It's a major chord, but it has a half step in it. So uh, it has a tension, has a motion, has whatever. And if I put a D underneath it, you get the D major D major seven sound, but we put the B underneath it and you get the B minor nine sound, which is this Donkey Kong vibe. If anyone knows a Donkey Kong soundtrack. <laughs> If you put a G underneath it, you'll get like a very cool Lydian chord. Oh, I ruin it. Ah, okay, I like music. Good to have you here anyway. Hope you have a nice sleep. Sweet dreams. Um, also, an E underneath it could be interesting. It's kind of a weird sound. a Dorian thing. Have I tried the new synth Vital? No, I don't even know what that is. Is who makes it? Um, okay, so I'm also thinking about how to, if I'm going to keep the arpeggios going or if I'm going to switch into like a new vibe here. I think we will keep the arpeggios going a little bit. Um, I'm going to take the lazy approach for now. I'm going to duplicate these out. And I'm just going to modify them to fit the new chords I'm looking for. So it's ending up here, which means this one can now start with our Donkey Kong vibe, which, like I say, I'm going to change this whole pattern, I think, at some point. Uh, and this pattern will also get changed. But for now, we're going to be in Donkey Kong Land. I think that's what, uh, who was it, Dimmy? Or somebody came on the stream one time and I was like, hey, underwater Donkey Kong vibes. <laughs> Vital's like serum, it's free. Vital audio, as good as serum. Say what? Really? I want to know about it. Let me put it in my search right now so I can remember to check it out. Vital synth. Vital spectral warping wavetable synth. You were just thinking about that before the stream. That's funny. It's good to see him. Not yet. Okay. Well, sick. I'm stoked on it. Thank you for letting me know. If anyone doesn't know, I worked as a professional sound designer for like two years making serum sounds. All day, every day, serum sounds. So serum is like my boy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, but you know, I'm open to new boys too. 
Okay. So now we're gonna change our harmonic rhythm as well. We've been playing chords pretty slowly, right? Holding on the harmony for quite a long time. And uh, we're gonna now throw changes quicker. Yeah. <laughs> I'm open to new boys, yeah. <laughs> Gotta keep the boys fresh. Um, every two beats, we're gonna go. Hey Zeus, you've tried it. And um, and then we're gonna go uh, major nine on this D chord. So I'm just moving these notes in accordance with some harmony that's in my mind at the moment. So I'm thinking B minor nine, A major add nine, D major nine. Um, and then we'll probably do it again I would like to even, I don't know why, it's not like this is, sometimes this happens to me. I just like have some musical theoretical idea in mind that has nothing to do with the music I'm making in terms of like, I didn't hear this sound and be like, oh, I need to hear that sound. I just see some notes down there. I'm like, oh, I actually want to do the same thing that I've just done, but like in a new key. And I have no other explanation for it other than that, other than I just suddenly feel like I want to do that. And it probably is gonna suck, but also I have to try it because I have to. So the idea the, the idea is going B B minor nine to A add nine to D major nine, holding that uh, holding that. Jesus Christ. Holding that twice. Now I want to go, um, this is the way. <laughs> now I want to go um, the same progression, minor nine chord up to an inverted major chord up to a major chord. And the question is, how can I make it work? I don't know that answer straight off the top of my head. I'm not that fast, unfortunately. There's a bunch of things we could do. We can swap this chord that we're playing, D, major nine into D minor nine and begin it right there. It's probably gonna be a bit odd. It's also kind of cool though. <laughs> but let's just think, maybe there's some other options too that, that make a bit more sense uh, in the key that we're in. So we could go for I don't know. I just have to try some stuff. Um, like that's interesting move. Let's hear it uh, together. I'm just gonna try to play them as block chords now for a second. dropping down to grab this. It's not really the sound I want though. Holding this, where can we go? Where can we go? Where can we go? If we're calling this, this, that, if this is that, then my way of thinking at the moment is I'm on a D major seventh chord. So I think about where do major seventh chords appear within a key? They appear on the one and the four. So if I'm visualizing those positions, then where is the nearest sort of minor ninth chord um, compared to the one and compared to the four? So for instance, if it's the one, if we're thinking of now D major as one, a minor ninth will appear on the two chord, which is E. Now I guess we could do the move over again from here. sort of thing. Um, so how's that sound? Oh my god. 
was a cool sound. <laughs> B minor seven over C. Interesting. Okay, save that for later. I'm here. Check the progress in the morning. Okay, it's great to have you here. Thank you. Mikawai. You're thinking B minor. Yeah, and of course, so was I because that's where I just came from. I was doing B minor. That's B minor. Into A. Into D. So I could just do B minor again, of course, but I was trying to like do something fancy, you know. <laughs> like that. That that works, eh? The E. That's not, not so bad. D major inverted. Uh, D yeah, add nine inverted we want actually. Yeah, let's try that out. Okay, so why is that ringing out so long? I don't know. Okay, anyway, we've got this thing. This is B. This is A. This is D. Now we're gonna move to the nearest voicing for an E minor nine. Sorry if I waste our time here trying this fruit fruitlessly. I don't know what the word is. Um, <laughs> I don't know. What, did you mean to A sharp? Is that what you mean? A flat? A S? What does that mean? A, as as major? An ass major? There's a hilarious thing that's happened a couple of times when I've been teaching one-on-one um, -on -one lessons with students and we're doing ear training and um, <laughs> S is a typo, I figured, a major nine. And we've been doing ear training and uh, we talk about, or we're talking about perfect pitch or something. And we say, oh, you know, like people can hear the, the uh, Fness of the sound or the Bness, and at some point I was like, they can hear the anus of the sound, <laughs> and I don't think my student actually picked up on it, but I just like burst out laughing because I I just I'd never thought about that before the anus, <laughs> the anus of the sound, <laughs> A major nine. So you're saying A major nine is going to come in um, where do you think? <laughs> Now this is going to be G major nine. Um, let's just try this. Like this is just an experiment, and we don't know what's going to happen. We never know what's going to happen, though, do we? into it. Okay, so here put some stuff beneath it. I'm just wondering if I should try something a bit more rhythmic at this point. And let's see if we can get different articulations. Oh, I have these as just the legato patches out right now. Um, so let's try to... I'm going to make a mess of this session. That's what I always do on stream though, right? I don't like do the boring stuff on stream and then I never go back and fix it. So all my sessions just look disgusting. Trust me, they're not disgusting normally. No, whatever, sometimes they are. Um, this one can, we can just make it full. 
you're just freestyling D major 9, B minor, F sharp, F, A major 9. Yeah, that's a great sound. D major 9, B minor, F sharp minor, A major 9. Sounds great, don't mind me. Huh. Great. Okay. So we're going to try with this guy to grab some staccato. Maybe even, actually pizzicato might be better in this case. What do you think? Pizzicato? Let's see if we can put this down even lower. Oh, camera's going up. There we go. One day I'll have a good camera for all of you. I'll be in 4K. You can like look into my pores, see if my blackheads are forming and all that. It'll be super sick. Okay, there we go. The reverb on that is insane. Okay, it's got a reverb on it as well. Yeah, like that's actually crazy. Why is there... Is it actually that big of a reverb? Is it is it the reverb I'm sending it to? That's insane. So The reverb is too big. It's going to have the chords bleed over each other, unfortunately. Um, say what? This device is... Oh. Yeah, so we're... I don't know. I'm just going to do it first, and then we're going to fix it. Fix it later. So that's my rhythm I'm thinking. Dum, dum, dum. Ah. Dum, dum, dum. Dum, 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 dum. Dum, 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 dum. Dum, 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 dum. Give it a shot. Switched uh, over to whatever it's called. Yeah, good idea with automating the send. Let's get these velocities sorted out. Bypass, yeah, I already read that. <laughs> Can you bypass the sender automate it? Yes, I will actually. See, some of these just randomly are like the sample is just way louder <laughs> than the other samples. Sing a B today. No. 
Okay, and we're going to harmonize this. We're going to harmonize this with um, the cello. So this is going to be bass full. This is bass L. We're going to have, you guys can be like a color. What's a color of a bass? Orangey, browny color? Is that, what, is that what they are? In your mind, that is not like the real color. I don't have that. Okay. So have you guys seen that fancy thing that's out now that some amazing person made where you can like get new colors into Studio One? That needs to be happening for me. I haven't gotten it happening yet, but it is a thing. You can download a like a plugin or an add-on that someone's made and you get a new toolbar where you can like have way more colors. That might sound kind of trivial, but it's not. Okay, and this cello is going to be the cello full. And for now, we're just going to dupe it. You've been looking for that since forever. I know. Me too. I look at these colors and I think, really? These are the colors? What is the ordering, A, of this? <laughs> Who chose how to lay this out? And why these ones? Why not like just an infinitely variable palette that we could choose from? Come on. That would be great. Okay. So now we got the cello and it's gonna be in its wrong octave. Better colors than other does. Yeah, it's totally true. Uh, it is totally true. Two groups of hmm. these are not the notes we're going to use, we're going to be harmonizing. So if I pull up the, the bass part simultaneously, <laughs> there we go. Um, let's probably harmonize in tenths or something like that. So B minor is the first chord going to the A over thingy. This is a D major. This is an E minor. And this is a D major. And this is a G major. Getting pretty high up though. <laughs> little um, <laughs> major five chord there. Not what I was looking for, but maybe it could be kind of cool. No, not for this song. I love that sound, but it's not going to fit this vibe.
I have to hear the rest of the music now. I'm like going to lose the vibe of the initial, the initial vibe of the whole thing. So I got to make sure I stay in with that. From the top. quite like it. Um, I want to try to put the other strings in here a little bit. I don't know if I'm going to keep it, but I do want to try. So two options come to mind. I don't know what you guys think would be a better idea. One is kind of contrasting the pizzicato vibe with held notes. So the viola and maybe both violins or one violin will be holding long notes through this. That sort of stuff. Or they too can be pizzicato, but they can be um, on a different rhythm. simple of a rhythm though but yeah that could work let me know if you've got any suggestions go for it but if not I'm gonna go for it Uh, what color is a cello? Maybe it's like a kind of this kind of color. Movie. 
Maroony. Both sounds nice, okay. Could always do a build with some high spiccato strings. Could always do a build with some high spiccato strings. What do you mean exactly? I'm not like super versed in the orchestral composition sort of stuff. I mean, of course I understand the words you're saying, but it doesn't, doesn't immediately conjure an idea for me about what to do with it. So I would like to know, I'm quite curious actually. I hear some of the stuff, um, combine long notes and pizzicato. That's an interesting idea too. Um, hey, I'm gonna go with the second idea first and then we're gonna see. I hear some stuff that people do, I mean, like in any kind of music, of course, but I hear some stuff that happens in orchestral music, uh, game music, film music, classical music, and it blows my mind. I think, how did you ever think to do that? How did you come up with those ideas? Some things that people come up with are so gorgeous and so genius. Some of the moves, harmonically, melodically, instrument choices, articulation choices, so much stuff just, wow, one day. Now that I got my Spitfire bundle of awesome sounds, maybe I'll become some kind of like orchestral aficionado. Not there yet, but we might get there. Okay, so these are violas. We're gonna go viola full. And then we're gonna, what color is a viola? Viola's like a peachy sort of thing. And violin two. I just copied, yeah, they only have one violin, right? Did I actually, hmm. did I take the right one for that? Viola, yeah, okay. Violin to, okay, let's just start with this and see what we can do. Um, save first, that's what we're gonna do. Let's put you in here and which one are you? There we go. So that's an F. Key switches are such a cool thing. I think it's just such a great idea, the way that, that was developed. I don't know if you guys who write orchestral music use key switches or do you use like a whole bunch of separate articulations that you keep out? I mean, the idea of key switches is nice because Obviously, like everything gets um, contained within a single unit, but I understand there's advantages to doing it the other way as well. I'd be curious, what do you do? Okay, so um, I'm gonna play the tones of the chord that are not being played by the bass and the cello. So they're playing basically roots and thirds for the most part. So I'm going to be playing sevenths and ninths, something like that. Key switches for me, it depends on the instrument I see. Okay. Kind of works. What was my rhythm? I like the way that they imitate each other, the lower, it seems like the 
first the lower part is is playing, then the second part imitates, then the then the higher part uh, speaks, and then the lower part imitates. It's kind of a nice thing. Uh, staccato eights. That could be interesting too. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna try it like this, um, and then I'm gonna grab the. Oh yeah, we gotta delete all this stuff and all this stuff. This is violin two full. It's too full, and. Let's pull you up, and you're definitely not spiccato or pizzicato. Okay. Changing chords too slow. Kind of worked out though. I was in my in my mind. I was literally like, I'm completely changing the wrong chords with these notes, but it actually just worked. So that might have looked like I knew what I was doing, but I didn't. <laughs> That's pretty funny, actually. So these ones now, now we're on to the E. Um, so they could be this and, and this. is this other chord. It's a cool note too.
This could be this node too. Can it? Yeah. I don't know if I want it to be though. these clarinets um, do something. So we're going to imitate that one little line there. I'm going to mute the second clarinet for a minute. Okay, so right there, uh, we will... Uh, this chord is what? This is a D. like that. That note's gonna. If that note's gonna work out, unfortunately. Much nicer. Okay, and for you, harmonize, harmonize. Welcome to everybody who's new on the stream, by the way. If you've not been here before, please feel free to say hello. And uh, I'm definitely active in the chat. I mean, it's not been happening the last few minutes. I've been concentrating. But, you know, I'm happy to chat with you. So 
please, if you have any questions, if you have any suggestions, if you just want to chat about video games, that's also super cool. <laughs> So here, this guy's on an E over top of this uh, over top of this D major nine chord, and then we're gonna go. Um, this guy's going like this. So this guy will go. Try that. I don't know if I like it so much. Some parallel fifth action, right? You gotta, gotta break the rules. Thanks, sweetie. So these guys need to be a bit more powerful and swell right before this. happens and then like really quickly come down. Let's make the other one swell a little bit too, and then I need to get some perspective on what I'm doing here. quieter, way faster, it needs to just be so gentle. So this needs to come way down and then swell. This needs to come way down. This needs to come down.
So, okay, let's get this melody. Get some melody. actually kind of cool. It's super high. It's nice though. This one will be it's kind of interesting too put the 11 in there. Yeah, maybe it doesn't work so hot. So they'll be coming together. One's descending, one's ascending. And then the lower one will jump, leap way down. to complete its motion. They're gonna be on a unison, but. How does it sound for you guys? Is it like, are these uh, clarinets audible at this point? I got headphones on, so it's easy for me to hear. They're very quiet. That's the intention, but is it like too quiet? drop out. The swell part is working, but the notes are not working somehow. I need to figure out a better harmony. I was just searching for my second earbud for that, but yeah, it's audible. Okay, good. Let's see if I want to just try something here. Everything sounds balanced in the big speakers. Okay, great. Um, I want to try to get super, super delicate on this note right here. Uh, it's a bit tedious because I have to do it with everything, but it might be worth it in the end. So let's try. Let's try. 
will be nice. Piano can't even go any lighter, but it needs to be lighter. Volume dip is too extreme. I haven't changed the clarinets. They're as they were. The strings maybe are getting a little bit too quiet. Let's bring them up a bit. Okay, that's good to know. get some perspective so I'm gonna listen to the whole tune it feels wrong to call this kind of music a tune hey this sounds better now okay good um, it's so funny the different words we have for a song sometimes when I'm making like a YouTube video I got to think about that like what I want to call it is it a beat is it a track is it a piece is it a song is it whatever you know each one has its own connotation I feel like I call this one a tune, and no, it's not going to work for me. People in the jazz world, everything's a tune, right? It's like, oh, we're going to play, call that tune. What tune are you going to call a piece of a track? Yeah. And uh, same within the electronic world. Some, a lot of people call it tunes, or in, if you're British, call it a tune. But uh, yeah, it just depends. And if it's, if it's classical, it's a piece. It's not a song. It's not a track. It's not a tune, it's a piece. A piece of what, my teacher would say. <laughs> hmm, <laughs> it's a mood, yeah, exactly. It's a vibe. Or, I saw on Spotify, it's a bop. I love that. Hmm. <laughs> this is not a bop, but I have a few bops. The timing of these high bits just irks me every time I hear it. They're like, not, not doing it. They will get fixed, but it's so nitpicky that I don't want to do it right now. That's the A in W.A. Matthew. 
and it's Mathieu in French, but he calls it Matthew. <laughs> It's funny also that W-A-M is Mozart, Wolfgang Amandas Mozart, and so same with uh, Alaudi, W-A Machu, W-A-M. What's it mean? Thanks, Hari, appreciate that. seems to yes okay I'm now gonna try to just duplicate this and not include the clarinets in the second repetition just let it be more its own thing and some percussion perhaps some light I don't know what to do with percussion in this kind of thing I need some help with that if someone knows it, some ideas empty without the clarinets though maybe they should come back I want to hear a massive timpani roll <laughs> reverse gong crash into glissando somewhere <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna say those are like the only things that I can think of <laughs> when I when I'm thinking of like actual orchestral percussion other than like a triangle or some like gigantic taiko hits. Doom, 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 doom. Um, I'm a big fan of a idea that I stole from orchestral huge kicks or what they call drums. Yeah, <laughs> um, I'm a big fan of an idea that I stole from Pat Metheny, who's one of my biggest influences, and he um, he does this thing really often. I mean, he, as in like his drummer, but he does it in his own music too, that he, where he writes the drum parts, the percussion parts. Um, I've talked about this before, where he has two ride cymbals and the ride cymbals are on either side of the kit. And so panned in your ears and they play these kind of complex polyrhythms very, very lightly, you know, on both sides, very continuously. And it creates this kind of rain quality which I love, and I actually use that all the time. So thanks, Pat. Um, thanks for everything, Pat. Jeez, how many things have I stole from Pat Metheny? Where'd he steal it from? I don't know. Dude's a genius. Um, yeah, so I would like to do that. It's not part of the regular percussion of the orchestra, obviously, but whatever. The thing is, though, it's going to be a chore to get it to work well. Well, we'll see. Maybe we can do it inside of here just because of the stock instrument limitation that I'm using. So trying to get realistic ride cymbals that you can hit often without sounding like a machine gun is the interesting challenge. And I have a feeling that we can do it by round robining a few of the... Like if we just go in here and search ride one shot, maybe there's even a loop that we could use that would work. Yeah, I mean, like this. And I think if I could just take perhaps the first two and then these ones, Take, take the first two. We might be in business. So let's give it a shot. Um, I need a impact. Oh, I already have one. Because I made a template. If you haven't seen my template video, that's probably one to see. I think a lot of people seem to like that one. All those rides come with S1. Ed, welcome. Uh, yeah, they do. With S1 Pro. Program some realistic drums. A. <laughs> I know somebody who knows about that. Okay, what we're going to do is actually put them on 
their own pads so I can trigger them exactly when I want. So I'm gonna grab three of these and we'll just stick it on whatever, this, this, and this. And then we're gonna grab, no, not the bell. Possibly these ones, um, see if there's anyone that's even better. This, this might be better. Oh my God, disgusting. Okay. Man, the opinions that you form, that I form about drum sounds after like 15 years of obsessing about drum sounds, man. Just going through lists of them, you know, like within one second. No, 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 yes. No, 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 yes. So much time spent doing that stuff. What I'm going to do now is volume balance them and then EQ them a little bit, then pan them, and then we're going to see if we can get the rain sort of effect going on. So. I'm gonna take the loudest one and I'm actually gonna do it visually, I think. This is gonna go off screen a little bit, so. Ugh. Where's my stuff here? Wow, they're so quiet. So quiet, goodness. And that's what they need to be, but still. So like this is reaching, you know, I don't know. It's so hard to tell when it's reaching such a low point in the meter, you can't really even work with it. So we're gonna use um, this doohickey. So hear all that low end in there? I don't know if you can hear it wherever you're, you're at. We gotta get rid of that. That's gonna ruin your mix. Um, okay, it's gonna ruin my mix. Your mix is gonna be fine, don't worry about it. Okay, so this guy, this guy's gonna come up. This guy's gonna come way up. Too much. Yeah, this one's got like a totally different tone, but we can maybe use that to our advantage. This one's gonna come down. Oh my goodness. This one's gonna come way down. Okay, and then we're just gonna use the built-in filter on here, I think. Well, we could even just do an EQ. Um, is there any reason I should use the filter instead of the EQ? We'll try the simple solution first. Um, I'm also gonna put these in a choke group. So choke group one for these guys and choke group two for these guys. I'm still plugging away at battery. I really like it, but I haven't found a way to use it well with the Atom controllers. So ideally, I could edit the samples in battery, then drag to impact. Hmm, that's an interesting idea. Using Conical for creating beats. Conical. I wish I was a Conical master. See some of that stuff that those guys do. Takati takati takataka takataka takata dimi tak. I'm just completely going off the top of my head. I don't know what I'm doing at all. I have a friend who's a master of the thing. Um, I'm actually, hopefully, one of these days, going to have him on the stream with me live. He's um, an Israeli bassist, professional bassist, and he's just one of the best musicians I've, I've ever met. And he's a rhythmic master, and he's, yeah, all about the counting like that stuff. It's just wonderful. Um, okay, so Asaf, that's the one, Asaf Rabi. So <laughs> that's tight. I'm still playing with battery, right? So ideally you could edit the samples in battery, drag to impact. That would be pretty sick. You can't quite do that. You have to bounce them out, unfortunately. Um, you're saying that you want to do that because the atom is working so well with impact. I want to say that you can set up a map. How do you do that? I 
I've done it once before. Maybe you've already done this stuff. Um, there's something somewhere in here that I never use because I don't need to that... Where do you find that stuff? You might already know the answer to this question, but yeah, there's something in here where you can where you can go in and map your controller and set like certain pads to output to certain notes and like save that as a thing. So whenever you open uh, impact or whatever, it's like, yeah, you know, got it in there at the, with the right notes and the right pads. And kind of like I just said, just say it over again. Legends use mouse. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm going to put the EQ on here. External device menu, perhaps in there. Um, I don't. I don't know. I don't think so. I think that you. There's like a there's a totally different view that I've only encountered because I was having problems with my controller and I never had to go back to it again. And I saw it and I was like, "Whoa, this is here. This does something good." But yeah, I'm gonna have to like oh is in here. This might be it. Um, nor maybe not. On the mixer on the left. Oh, over here, you mean. This is not the thing that... I don't know. This is gonna, I just got to leave it for now. <laughs> I'll figure it out at some point. Or you'll figure it out and you'll let me know. Either way, we're going to get it sorted. Okay, so let's enable this. And I'm gonna, I like to cut my ride symbols like way, way up. So I'm just gonna pull this like, yeah, I don't quite know yet where, but let's just put like a very simple ride pattern in here. And I'm gonna do it over this part. <laughs> something a workaround would be would I think a workaround would be to get a folder organized in the browser where I can save those files and then drag them over a folder oh you mean like in the um, battery browser or in this browser yeah so I'm cutting maybe a bit too much out of the symbols right now but S1 browser, I see. Mm -hmm. So this can be this, this can be this. Is that actually the same samples? I, I thought I put two different samples, but I wonder if they actually just took the same sample and like volume shifted it. That's entirely possible. Because this is not nearly as like chill sounding as I would like it to be. No, it's, it sounds stupid. Stupid, but we're still going to use it for a little bit. Damn. Yeah, I don't know if this is going to work out very well. Maybe I 
should start the pattern again earlier. I don't know. Let's get an opinion on that. Right now I'm looping this, this like, you know, when you put 16th notes in groups of three, and then eventually it's going to loop on itself where you're going to cut it early. Right now I'm cutting it early here at bar 37. Tell me what you think about this. So the pattern is like two bars long in that case, but it could also have do it right here. I don't mind that either. Did you guys have an opinion on that? Do you like the longer two bar one or did like come in earlier like that? sample hard to say yeah I think I'm gonna keep it on the shorter one I feel like it's probably leading towards the longer one I like it how it is all right well I think I'm gonna try this sh this shorter one to begin with ah. making a lot of that sound today hey I'm like scared of stuff today So we can do the pattern like this. This could be maybe this one, please work. I guess. Maybe they alternate back and forth. Ta to ta to. It's okay. I'm gonna put it so quiet that you can't even tell, you can't even hear what the issues are and then the day will be saved. Okay, so we're gonna pan them. All y'all are gonna get panned. I'm out, okay, Thomas. Great to have you here as always. Thanks for stopping by. Um, I wonder if I can Flip the left right on th these by any simple means. Does anyone know that? If I put them out there, uh, if I send them out their own output, I can do that. And maybe that's the solution because they're already leaning. Like if you look on the meter over here, when I hit the symbol, it's got a baked in pan off to the right side a little bit. So I want to work with the baked in pan and then instead of trying to fight it, excuse me. What if you take out the downbeat so it doesn't have two, so it doesn't have the two quick ones? Yeah, I'm curious about that. Um, I will try that in just a minute. Um, so I'm, I want to reverse the left and right channels. I don't think that impact is going to let me do that, right? No. So... What I can do is set this up to be, oh, I've already got these this set up. So let's, all we need is just these two right now. And these ones are gonna go out, output two, which is called kick right now, but it's definitely not a kick. Or is it? If we use it, let me do a beat like that. Use the ride symbol as the kick. Give it a shot. So now you're coming out of here and I can flip you using a mix tool, correct? So we'll do that as the first thing. We're just gonna If I No. Oh, this can't do it. Can it? Because if I invert, is it just going to be the phase? Yeah, so it doesn't make any difference. Oh, swap channels. Hey, okay. So now the recording is already going to the left. So when I pan it, it will be a more natural sound rather than trying to fight the thing. OK. 
Okay, and then these ones have a right preference, so that's fine. They're already going right, so we'll go 94 right. Or 90 whatever, 5 is fine. <laughs> So I'll try and drop the one like you're talking about. Now oh, this one's not correct. It's interesting. I don't know if I like it as much as having the double. It's not bad. But I do, I, I think I do like having the downbeat for whatever reason. It's just, I think at the moment is of interest to me. Um, okay, so let's see. I'm gonna like even cut more. This is so aggressive sounding, these samples, even though they were the lightest samples. The different samples have different panning amounts in them of this ride symbol. I can tell that one of them is farther left than the other one. But whatever, we're going to leave it be. We're also going to uh, have a custom reverb for these guys to make the whole thing washy. I don't know if this is actually going to work. Like this, we might do all this work and get nothing good out of it. What happens if we just send it to the reverb that all the strings are in and stuff? That actually might do the trick. I just push swap channels so that um, the left channel and the right channel get swapped. So the information on one becomes the information on the other. And since the right channel was louder than the left channel, because the, the panning was baked into the sample, meaning it was recorded that way, uh, if you swap the channels, now it will have, it'll be tilted to the left uh, in the recording. And so it's easier easier. It's not easier. It just sounds better to pan it in the direction it already wants to go. There's more energy on that side. So because it's a stereo recording, it already had some panning baked in. That's why I did it like that. Hopefully that makes sense. So I don't mind this. We're gonna have to see how it feels in the, like it's gonna need something to like ramp into it probably. I don't know what that's gonna be. It'd be nice to have some like, you know, sweeping chimes of some sort. And then we can just, yeah, have one more hit of each of these. Here. I mean, they, I wonder, 
or could we? Wonder if we just like. No. Nope. 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 Let's search for chimes. Chime. Chimes. One fifteen, Lucy. <laughs> Not the kind of chimes I'm looking for. You know what? We might even be able to use that in the song. Also not the kind of chime. There's a there's a name for this. I feel like Thomas would know it, but he's gone now. Huh. Someone know what it's called? The orchestral chimes are called? That you like sweep the thing through and it's all magical and whatnot? Because <laughs> um, maybe they just list it under like the legit name and I don't actually know it. Or maybe they don't have it. It's also very likely. A timpani loop. <laughs> wow. The catching feelings loop. <laughs> Meant for your next R&B banger. Shit. Need to be getting into the trap now, hey? No, it's not tubular bells. Tubular bells, uh, I don't think, have the have an actual like bell dong sound, right? Dong. Maybe I'm tripping. Maybe you're totally right. Hey. I don't know why I'm, I'm looking through these. I'm just... Cymatics here too. Cymatics, what do you mean? The cymatics drum samples? Or like actual the study of cymatics, like the vibrations of sound in sand and water, which I'm actually super into if anyone wants to talk about cymatics. <laughs> um, we're coming to the end of the stream. I'm going to play through the tune once more. And then uh, we'll just listen to a couple other things briefly. Uh, we'll check out the song from the other stream in case you guys have missed that. And uh, then we'll say goodbye. They're sound packs, yeah. So I just can't use the cymatics stuff in here, of course, because I'm using only the stock sounds. They have like something else in here. Maybe it is cymatics that made it. I don't know. They have some MVP stuff. I don't know what that is exactly, but... Hey, I've got 108 playbacks right now. 108.
Mark Tree. Tree, that sounds about right. I don't know why it's called a Mark Tree, but... We'll do another couple weeks on this and see how far we can get. Um, I just wanted to show you guys something that since you've stuck with me here on the stream. Thanks, sweetie. I appreciate that. I like it too. I rarely make music like this, you know. I rarely make orchestral stuff. Very, very rarely. I love this kind of music, but I just, I don't know. I end up making groovy, heavy stuff, you know. So it's a nice change of pace for me. Um, there's so check the links guys in the description here for the discord if you haven't joined that yet to chat with me about music you can just join that discord the link is in this description and then um, also there's a link to my course there and the part two of the course all about melody is coming out hopefully tomorrow if my emoji problem gets solved um, and then this music I'm going to show you right now is actually the music from the trailer for the new uh, course and yeah it's kind of cool actually uh, for a reason I'll share with you in just a second when are you coming live again good question Hari I'm gonna be live again on Sunday next Sunday at 10 a.m. Pacific time and we're gonna be working on a song completely different from this the people who have been on both streams know what I'm talking about it's literally the polar opposite super jazzy, heavy, fat craziness, basically. Um, one of the craziest songs, actually, I think I've ever worked on, which has been a blast to do it on stream with everybody. Um, but anyway, I'm going to, if this ever loads, I mean, it's really taken a while here, but we're going to get there at some point. I will show you this new song. I'll do a breakdown of this probably on the channel at some point, too. It's kind of cool. Uh, what I ended up doing was taking the, if you remember, I did a, a breakdown on my channel. It's called like, I don't know, groovy, chill hop, big breakdown or something like that. I can't remember what it's called. Um, but it's the music for Musical Warp Drive Part 1 trailer. And I decided I would take the music for every, I would take, for every trailer, I will take the same song and redo it with new instruments and a new feel and new everything. So this is that same tune, if you guys have seen that video uh, from there, but with new instruments. And I don't know why, but my contact recently has been just frying my computer. It just seems to like do this. It just says, okay, we're gonna be with you in half an hour. So for now, we're just chilling. For now, we're just hanging out. I appreciate all of you being on the stream and um, it blows my mind, honestly. It blows my mind that that people tune in and are from all around the world and hang out with me and make music. It's kind of a dream for me to do this, to be with all of you and just be able to share in this thing that I love doing so much. And I'm so glad that all of you love doing it as well, or at least like to watch, <laughs> watch it happen. You learn so much too. That's great to hear, Hari. Thank you. Um, okay. <laughs> Your live stream is great. That's very sweet. Thank you. <laughs> She's my biggest fan, you know, and no one will ever be able to take that spot. I'm sorry, guys, but, you know, it's just the way it goes. Okay, so here's the tune. It's going to be louder than the previous one, so please adjust your volume. I'm going to play you a couple drum hits here. I know I've, like, lulled you into um, some kind of fantastical hypnagogic state, but we are now on our way out of that state. Here's the volume of the drums. Okay. This 
This is not stock instruments anymore. We've left that behind. Okay, here's the tune. Let's play through it. Yeah, if you go back on the channel, it'll be somewhere in the in the tutorial section. Uh, there's me breaking down the original version of this tune, uh, with all the, I talk about all the chords and blah blah blah, all the fancy stuff that's going on in there. And one of the things that I particularly liked about this was I got a chance to highlight uh, the melodies that I wrote for the intro part. And since this next part of the course is all about melody. I made the decision to let the first part of the trailer have no speaking on it and we're just you just hear the melody. And in the previous version, these melodies are actually there. They're an octave lower, but they're buried um, under some other instruments a little bit. So here now they've put, been put up an octave and you can kind of hear them a lot more clearly. I'll play that melody for you once more. <laughs> just talking on the uh, Discord earlier today about a company called Embertone. And Embertone is who makes this clarinet that I use in so many of my songs uh, because I love the sound of clarinet in general, but also Embertone makes this solo clarinet that I think is just gorgeous. Although right now it's my buffer size or whatever is like causing me to get some pops because <laughs> yeah, Megan plays clarinet to a certain degree, and I would love love for you to play me a scale. Play me a scale, I'll put it on the tune. Well, someday we'll have all the instruments, all the good instruments. So yeah, that's that one. Um, I will uh, hopefully release the trailer tomorrow. The trailer will be on YouTube on, and on Udemy with a special coupon code to buy the course for literally peanuts because that's the way that Udemy, Udemy does things. They sell stuff so cheaply, it's kind of mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. So if you check out the course, if it's not on sale today, it'll be on sale tomorrow. If it's not on sale tomorrow, it'll be on sale the next day because that's just the way they do things, which that's fine. I signed up for it, but you know. It's good for you guys, right? You don't have to spend so much money. You get hours and hours of instruction on something. Right now, I'm in the course counting intervals like there's no tomorrow. Hey, that's great to know. <laughs> Delicious peanuts as far as your course, yeah. <laughs> okay, everybody. Thank you for being with me. Um, like I said, I really appreciate it. And I appreciate your input and feedback. Uh, if there's any videos you'd like to see or courses you would like me to make, um, that you think would be helpful for you and for other people. I'm always very interested in that. I want to respond as much as possible to um, what would be beneficial for everybody who watches the channel, especially all of you that are here so often and uh, support me so much. So if you have any ideas, you can send them to me in any way that you want to. One of the best ways is to be on the Discord because on there I do have a um, section about that where you can give suggestions. A pop track, yeah. One day it will happen. One day I'll make a pop track. And it will actually make a friend of mine very happy. I have a really good friend who writes pop songs kind of like as part of his career. 
and he's um, asked me many times over the years if I would write a beat for him for a pop track, and I always say, ah, I don't know. I kind of want to, but I kind of don't want to. So it would actually be a fun experiment someday, and maybe I'll, I'll make a tutorial on it too when I do it. It would be good. But yeah, okay, have a great rest of your day, everybody. Thank you for being with me. Um, nice to nice to hang out with all of you. I'll be back on Sunday, Sunday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. And this week, hopefully, will be the week where I start releasing a whole bunch of new videos on YouTube, not just live streams. So keep your eye out for that. If you're not subscribed already or if you haven't liked this video, you could always do that. It's very helpful for me. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you all very soon.